Hey coders, now is the time we've all been waiting for. We are going to take our first steps into automation with time-based triggers. So I usually like to keep this list short because I like to keep the video shorter, but as I was looking at all the methods, I thought all these are extremely powerful. We have to include them at least for a little bit in the video. So our top 15 method methods for today are new trigger, time-based, after, at, at date, at hour, create, every weeks, every days, every hours, every minutes, in time zone, near minute, on month day, and on week day. So let's jump into the code and see a little sample of each of these methods. We have a lot to cover, so let's get right down to work. In our code editor here, you can see that we have two functions named out. So the first one, or this, the second one right here, is called send email, and basically all that it's doing is it's accessing the Gmail app and sending an email to this account, this email address, the subject line is hey you, and the body is help you have a wonderful day with a smiley face. So let's say we want to set up a trigger on this email. Our triggers, our, our time-based triggers at least, are installable triggers so they can all be accessed through the script app class. And then we'll go down and then this is the one that we want. So we want new trigger, it takes a, a, a function name as an argument, so we'll say send email, this is the one that we want to trigger. And then it's customary now to drop a line and then start writing down all the methods because uh, this can, this, this when you set up a new trigger, it's, it's uh, what we do is we chain methods together. So if there's a lot of criteria and we use a lot of methods, it can take up a lot of space on one line. Basically it's a lot more readable if it's down and uses multiple lines. And we'll showcase that just in a second. So. This is the one that we're looking at today, time-based. And we'll hit the return key and we'll say, now we have a, so now we have all the methods that are time-based. And so let's just go start going through them all. So let's look at first on month day. So let's say you want to run this uh, method right here, send email every single day. Um, actually, let's first say, so the day of the month, let's say one. So what this means now is that let's say we wanted to run send email on the first of the month every single month. So that would be say it's February now, but let's say on March 1st we want to run this. It would run it on March 1st. On April 1st it would also run it. May 1st run it. Great. So that's what this means. It's going to run this function send email on the first of every month. There's one more method that you need to know and that is dot create. So after you have after you have built out your trigger, you need to complete your your uh, your methods or your chain with a dot create, and this will create the trigger. It'll say, "Hey, I'm done here. Let's create the trigger," and that'll do it. So I'm not going to run this. I'm going to save, but I'm not going to run it because I don't want to wait until March 1st to show that this works. But if you did run it, it would set up the trigger, and then exactly at well, maybe not exactly at midnight, but right around midnight it would fire this function and then we would get a message saying, hey you, have a wonderful day, great. So now let's look at another method instead of on month day, say we wanted it on weekday. So now this takes in a weekday. So if we want to run this function say every Monday, then we could say, um, let's run it. And I don't know if you saw, but when we say on weekday, this now takes an argument uh, of type weekday. So type weekday is a enum. It's a part of an enum that is accessed through the script app. So if we say script app dot weekday, there it is. And then now we can find the, the day of the month is Monday. So now what this is saying is we're gonna run this function, send email, we're gonna set up a trigger that runs around midnight on Monday, every single Monday. So that's on weekday. So now let's say you want to get a little bit more specific though. You didn't want to, you didn't really want to run it on a certain day of the month or a certain week or a certain day of the week. You want to run it say every day or every hour or every minute or every week. So that's what all four of those methods do. So every day, every hour, every minute, every week, they take in an argument n, and that is basically how frequently or how frequently of this time period you want to run the function. So if you say every day, and then you say one as your argument, that's going to run this function every day at around midnight. And if you say two, it's going to say, now I'm going to run this function, 
send email every other day. So this is uh, this is this is the duration between how long these th this function should be fired. So if you say now dot and then you say every weeks and you and you give the the argument of three, it'll run every third week. Same with hours. Uh, same with minutes. However, with minutes, it's a little bit more constrained because you uh, this this argument right here can only be one, five, ten, fifteen, or thirty. So you need to choose one of these five one of these five numbers to say for every minute. Um, that's just something that Google has set up. So let's say if you want to run the function every five minutes, that's how you would do it. But that's so that's great. But let's say if you say every day and you put in the argument of one, so you want to run it every single day, but you don't want to run it at midnight. Let's say you want to run it at noon. So you can do that and you would just drop a line and you would say dot and then you would say at hour. Here it is at hour. So integer and then yeah, it takes in an integer and that's the hour of the day that you want. So this is uh, somewhat zero index, but so is time if you think about it. Like so midnight is at hour zero, right? And then one at one o'clock a.m. is at hour one, two o'clock a.m. is at hour two, and then it's also military time. So if you wanted to run it at say one o'clock p.m., it would be at hour thirteen. So this this these parameters run from zero to twenty three, and let's say we wanted to run it at noon, we would just say hour twelve. However, this is not that specific. So this is at hour twelve. However, this will actually run at a random time between noon and one o'clock p.m. So this is not technically at hour 12, it's sometime between 12 o'clock and one o'clock. You can specify that a little bit more by saying dot near minute. However, even if you say dot near minute and let's say zero, or just zero, this is gonna be plus or minus 15 minutes. So really the closest that you can get using these two methods is just within a 30 minute time frame, which is what you might want sometime. You know, you don't maybe if you're sending an email, you may not want it to come exactly at 12 o'clock every day. You may want to give it a little bit of wiggle room. So I do use these methods every once in a while, but just so you can know, these are going to be somewhat random. So let's see what else we have. We can also say something like in time zone. So if we drop a line again and we say in time zone, this will take a string as the parameter and you need to specify a time zone. So let's say your friend, you're, you're in New York and you're sending uh, this email out to a friend in uh, Chicago. So of course, that's only one hour time difference. So you could easily just say, you know, change it to so that it works. But let's say you want to set it at noon and you don't really know how to do the calculation. So what you can say is just in time zone, and then you need to give it a time zone, which is America slash Chicago. So this is the official way to write the Chicago time zone. For all the other official uh, methods of writing wherever the location is that you're looking for, uh, you can go to a website called joda.org, and that will give you all of the acceptable uh, parameter names, but let's say so if this one was in Chicago We'll just say America.Chicago and then that will automatically run it in Chicago at noon Great, so there's a couple more that we want to look at and that is let's first look at at so we're going to delete all of these And I'm going to say at so this takes a JavaScript date as you can see here and let's say we want to run an at a JavaScript date which which we need to first instantiate that date and say new use this keyword here it's called new and then let's say the year is going to be 2020 and the uh, the month is going to be February so this is going to be zero index January is zero February is one let's say the date will be 22 and the hour is going to be 13 and the minute will be 35. So this is just basically one day from today. It's gonna say we're going to run it at this date, this specific date. And this is kind of nice because now when we specify the date using a JavaScript uh, date, it will actually run at this minute. 
So before when we just did an hour near minute, we could only get within a 30 minute um, confidence interval, but now we can actually specify and this will actually run it at this minute, which is kind of nice. And so this is, this is if we want to get it extremely specific. So if we just say that and then create, it'll run it at this time, it'll run this function at this time. There's also another way to kind of do this and that is with the app script method at date. So as you can see, if you don't really understand JavaScript dates that well, you can also run this at date method and then take in a year, 2020, month will be two uh, for February. This is not zero indexed. Uh, date will be, or day will be uh, 22. And then this will run at midnight. So unfortunately there's only three arguments here and this will run at midnight unless you specify say uh, at hour an hour or every minute, something like that, but this is not as specific as the at method. So anyways, there's one more method I wanna cover before we close out this video, and that is after. So we'll say dot after. So after takes in a argument that's called duration milliseconds. So this is going to run this function, send email after, after let's say if we wanna say 10 seconds after we run this function setup trigger. So this takes in a milliseconds. So if we say we want to run it 10 seconds after we run this function, that'd be 10 times 1,000 milliseconds to get our to get our seconds. So that is 10,000. So now if we save it, and we're actually going to run this one, and it ran. So let's count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine, 10. So now it just ran this function without us hitting the function or saying send email run, anything like that. Um, it ran this function. If we go look into our inbox, and here it is. So it was sent just, you know, it's kind of hard to tell because uh, they don't give us the seconds or anything like that, but this was sent exactly 10 seconds after we, after we ran this setup triggers. So guys, that was a lot of information. I know it's gonna be a lot of time just to absorb all that, but I would suggest just playing around with it yourself and trying to get a feel for it. If you have any questions, comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.